Right then, welcome back. Today, today, I am hopefully going to give you a few hints and tips on Magni cores, and then we're going to talk about how to set up 600 naked and then the 1000cc sports bikes. I'm not going to do endurance bikes and race bikes, I might do them further on down the line but they're all much of a muchness so we're just going to stick to the the bikes that people seem to be using the most um, and fingers crossed it gives you some help and you can improve your lap times and all the other good stuff that goes along with it I did do a very very lengthy um, setup video um, on using a fire blade at Utah it's 40 odd minutes long it goes really quite in depth into how the different settings in the game work how they differ to how you would set a bike up in the real world as opposed to the digital world I'll put the link in the description so if you haven't seen that and you want a bit more information on how things work go and watch it if you have seen it we're not going that in depth this time it's just going to be a bit more quick and dirty to try and hopefully give you a setup that can help you get faster and uh, and make you a bit happier. So, first thing, track guide, Magni Cores. The thing with Magni Cores is it's got a bit of everything. It's got fast straights, it's got big braking zones, it's got fast corners, it's got slow corners. And I'll try and highlight the most important parts. So over the start finish line, down the straight, and we get to here. Now, when you're doing a time trial, handily, there's loads of black marks that basically show you the racing line on the track. Not everybody likes to use the racing line. I kind of go where I feel the bike wants to go and wants to drive forward at the same time, but we'll touch on that if we need to a bit later on. So, turn one, the end of this kerb and the pole on the right, you want to try and use that as your turning point and you want to make turn one and turn two one continuous corner. Try not to pick the bike up and then lay the bike down again to keep going left. It's much faster to turn in, a little dab of brakes, you might want to drop down a gear as well, we're right at the top end of fourth gear now, tip in little dab on the brakes as you go through turn one into turn two um you might like i said want to drop down a gear and what we're trying to do is straight line turn three and ha as we hit the curb for turn three we're going to go right along the really really long sequence of right hand bends that take us onto the back I apologise, I called it turn three, it's not, it's turn one and two. Turn three is the right hander in front of us, but it is what it is. I've started to move the rider's weight to the right hand side of the bike now. I'm still on the gas. You don't need to break a massive amount for this right hander. You can go back a gear. If you're using level one, two, three engine braking, it will slow the bike down a fair bit and this corner has two apexes the right hander so you just need to roll off the throttle a little bit hold it in a neutral position so you've either got open or closed in the middle neutral a constant throttle the track will come back to you and then you'll run the bike out to the left hand side of the circuit where you can get back on the gas you'll see it straighten up Try not to get on the grass on the gas too much or too early because you'll just cause the back end of the bike to slide out. So we go in, I'm on a part throttle, you can see at the bottom right hand corner, holding it, holding it, and then you'll see the track straight and get on the gas, and now it's just flat out. The track's going continuously right. Try to moderate your inputs. Don't try and put too much energy into the bike. The bridge and the 200 meter board on the left hand side there the bridge and that 200 meter board you want to be braking on the 600s somewhere between the two 
on the naked bikes, you want to be braking at the bridge. On the really fast stuff, you want to be braking before the bridge. Handily, when the circuit designers built Magni Cores, they put bridges just before or at most of the braking points, which is very kind of them, but we'll point them out as we go on. Got a really tight hairpin coming up. Stay across to the left-hand side of the track. Don't take too much kerb on the inside. The penalty line, or whatever we're going to call it, sticks out a fair bit from the actual edge of the kerb. So sometimes you think, oh, I've done really well. I'll nip across the kerb, and it gives you a it gives you an invalid lap. So don't take too much kerb at the hairpin. Coming out of here, the bike's going to want to wander to the left. Try not to let it. You've got a little curve to the right, a little, little curve to the left. And then we're coming up to the first chicane. Two fast chicanes on Magna Cores and one horrible nagery, curb heavy thing just before the start finish line. The first chicane, I like to think of it as slow in, fast out. The second chicane is more fast in, slow out, they're the reverse of each other. For this one, we've just gone under the bridge, you've got the 100 metre board just ahead of you by the green and blue barrier on the left hand side. You want a, a decent amount of brake, down a gear maybe it's two, take a bit of kerb on the inside of the right hand part of the chicane and as soon as you're on the kerb, move the weight across to the left because you can take a massive amount of kerb on the left part of the chicane which leads us up to the 180 degree corner. So throw the weight left, take a lot of kerb on the gas and your breaking point for this is the end of the kerb somewhere there or thereabouts. It's going to vary depending on what tyres you're using, how much engine braking you're using you watch certain videos that people have done on YouTube and it's you must break at this red part of this kerb or you must break exactly at that blade of grass next to the 100 metre board. It's impossible to be that accurate. Not only that, everyone rides the bike slightly differently. Some people jam the brake on full straight away, some people don't. They put a little bit of pressure on to move the weight forward and then put more pressure through the brake. Some people are using a steering wheel so they've got pedals, well they're not going to re react as fast. Everyone's slightly different so have a general idea of where the braking zone is and then as you do more and more and more laps you should be able to fine tune it depending on the bike you're on and the setup that you're using. 180 degree corner in front of us this is this corner is all about patience. Try not to get on the gas too early. It just keeps going and going and going. If you get on the gas too early, the bike will drift to the right and then you'll be completely offline for the right hand kink before we go down to the second fast chicane. You want to try and hold the bike across to the left as much as you can. I don't really do a very good job of it with this. When we get up onto the, into the setup stuff, I've kind of learnt my lesson and we'll hold it across to the left a little bit more. Be patient on the gas, don't get on the gas too early. So nice and patient, patient, patient. Then you've got to make sure you get across to the right. The bike's going to want to spin up, it's going to want to spit you off. It's down to the next chicane, just after the bridge. And 100 metre board again. So the bridge to the 100 metre board, that's your braking zone, there or thereabouts. You can carry a bit more speed into the first part of the chicane, the right hand bend. There's a little crest just as you go in. If you're carrying too much speed, the back end of the bike's going to slide out. So you've got to learn, normally the hard way, by trying it over and over again, how much speed is too fast, how much traction control are you using. Because remember, the traction control is also a stability control system. If you're using more engine braking, you're going to start turning to the right as you go over the crest, so it's going to unsettle the bike. So there's quite a few factors. This, this is, I think this is probably the hardest corner on the game to get consistently right. The last chicane's a pain in the arse, 
but this is this is a technical corner. You're losing speed. You're transitioning the bike to want to turn to the right and then to the left, and you're going over a crest, and you've got to lose a bit of speed in the middle because the left-hand bend in the second half of the chicane is slightly tighter than the entrance. So we're going to be slightly quicker in, slightly slower out. Hold it across to the left, and we have got, on the left-hand side of the track, we've got a little bit of kerb. Now, I've run a bit too far out to the right-hand side there. I didn't bleed enough speed off in the middle of the chicane. I would like to be where the racing line is, about six, seven feet to my left, and just as you get to the kerb that you can see on the left-hand side, that's where you want to be putting the brakes on. You can run really deep into this corner before you go down the little back straight, or if you get enough speed off, you can turn really tight, stand the bike up, and it gives you a much straighter line. There's not a massive amount in it on the 600s. The more corner speed you carry, the more speed you've got down the straight. You don't have to build it back up. If you're stopping and turning it in like a V shape, yeah, it's up to you. It's whatever you prefer. If you're running loads of engine braking, try to brake in a straight line because the back of the bike's going to want to start moving about. So on the brakes, I run in a bit deep, carry a bit of speed through the corner, and then this just goes continually to the right, across to the right hand side under the bridge, and then we're going to go tight left. And you can see, just in front of us, we can almost see straight down the white line of the track on the left-hand side, where, where the tent is just over the wall. As soon as you kind of see that straight line moving out in front of you, that's your braking point. There's a braking marker just behind us, and there's a braking marker up there. You want to be somewhere in between. All right, so just as you see the white line go straight you want to be on the brakes you can take quite a lot of curb on the right hander just up ahead as well so on the brakes across to the left you can take a bit of curb first first or second it's up to you and we come to the worst corner on the track the horrible chicane now because of the way the bikes take a little bit of time to transition from from left to right and vice versa it's very tempting to keep moving to the right to get closer to the corner I struggle doing it that way what I tend to find I have to do is stick more to the racing line and it's a little bit of a lottery whether I can take enough curb or not enough curb or anything else this normally makes or breaks my lap when we come onto the setup videos, you'll see in the top left of the screen, I've done four or five laps before I actually get to a lap time that I'm reasonably happy with and I'm happy for the rest of the world to see. So stay left, tip in, take a lot of curve and be mindful of not jumping on the gas as you come out. If you're running loads of traction control and anti-wheelie, you might get away with it. If you're running a bike that's got a lot of juice and you're running quite a stiff setup, it's going to try and spit you off, it's going to try and wheelie. So, again, it's one of those things where it's trial and error. You've got to find what works for you and work out whether you like first or second or a combination of both. So I go back to first, take as much curb as I can. As soon as I hit the curb on the right, straighten the way of the bike across to the left, and there we are, a lap of Magni course. So, I know it's a lot to remember, I know it's a lot to take in. My advice to you is go and ride around the track on a stock bike, stick an exhaust on it, and just do laps and laps and laps and laps and laps. Work out where the track goes, work out where your braking points are. Just go and do that. Don't worry about anything else. Go and get used to the track. If you're used to the track, well, now we can start talking about setups. We're going to do three bikes. ZX6R Kawasaki 2019. We're going to do a 1290 Super Duke, and we'll do the Aprilia um, RF1100 I think it is so we've got a 4 cylinder 600 a V twin naked which boils tyres for fun and then we've got a V4 1100 sports bike so we've covered a lot of bases the setups they're going to end up being pretty similar the tyre compounds are, are pretty much the same in the game we've spoke about spring rates in, in the long setup video and how I don't quite think that the spring rates are necessarily that well thought out for the physics models but it is what it is and 
we'll we'll do what we can. The first thing we're going to do with each bike is we're going to run a lap on stock tires to see how the bike is putting energy into the tires, where we need support, where we don't need support, where we might need to run a slightly harder tire or a softer tire and we'll go from there. The reason I like to use the stock tires is the stock tires limits are much lower. If I had a stock bike and I went and put medium slicks on it, I might not get a very warm tire and I might not know whether it's a lack of energy in the tyre at one end or not enough energy in the tyre at the other or too much energy and vice versa. The stock tyres, because the limits are much lower, they'll heat up much quicker and you get to see where the energy is and isn't going on the bike much more effectively. So it'll be a full lap on stock tyres. Then we'll go and do an adjustment on the stock tyres. We'll see where we can get the stock tyres to. Then we'll go and fit slicks. We'll run the slicks. If we need to, we'll make another adjustment and then there'll be a final setup with a final time and a quick glance at the leaderboards to see whether it's in the ballpark or I'm miles away or I'm talking out my arse or I'm not and I'm in the top 50 or 20 or whatever it is and you can take that setup and carry it forward and do what you need to do. So, first bike, ZX6R 2019. It's fully tuned, but it's wearing stock tyres, just to punish the tyres a little bit more. The stock blade around Utah was an absolute nightmare. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to revert everything back to stock, and then we're going to go and set a lap time, stock tyres, and I'm going to shut up and just let it run. So, end of the lap, and we can quite clearly see that we need quite a lot more front support and possibly some wheelie control, but it's a 600, so I'm not massively scared of it. So we come back out, we jam a little bit of spring harness in the front and the back. I'm happy with the way the bike's reacting. I'm running one click lower at the front because I feel like it gives me more edge grip. And then we go again, and... We've had a couple of goes and we've got it down to a 141.079 and this took quite a lot of time, there was quite a lot of restarts, there was quite a lot of head scratching as to what was going off um, and we eventually, eventually get it down to a 140.637. Yes the front tyre is still a little bit warm but the back tyre has taken a bit more of the energy as well so we've spread the load between the two tires this stock tires they're going to get absolutely crucified so we need some slicks so that's what we'll do we'll go and put some slicks on and see how we go so slicks are on we're back at the track we'll go for a medium front i just find the soft front tire too soft to run on anything other than the 300s or the 125, 250, something like that. 
it's just too soft it doesn't give you any support it feels like it pancakes and it's it's just not a very nice tire to use again we've had a few goes at this five laps complete countless restarts and we end up getting down to where are we I think it's a 130, 137? Yeah, 137.601. I changed tyres, I changed bike, I changed setup, I went to a, a hard front and a medium soft, I went to a medium front and a medium soft, and I, I just, I couldn't get anywhere near it. Um, I was, I think the closest I got was a 137.9. I had a quick glance at the leaderboards, they're all using the Daytonas and the R6s, which are, apart from the kid in third, who's an absolute monster, and they're all a good 20 odd performance points in front of where we are. However, I'm not too arsed about setting the fastest time in the world, it's just, am I there or thereabouts? 135.1, well, two and a half seconds. Wherever that two and a half seconds is on that track, I don't think it's from riding round. I think it's probably from knowing where to cut the corners and knowing where you can take a load of curb and where you can't, etc, etc. But we've set a top 15 time on a 137.6. So we know we're there, there or thereabouts. Fill your boots and see if you can do better than that. So, next bike is KTM 1290 Super Duke R, and we're going to revert it back to standard, we're on stock tyres, again it's fully tuned, just, <laughs> just absolutely murder these tyres. Again, I'll shut up until the last couple of corners. Yeah, that, um, that front tyre is not happy at all. Um, 139.6, exactly two seconds slower than the 600. And what we need to do is pump a load of energy from the front to the back of the bike. The suspension setup ended up getting harder and harder and harder and harder because the bike's just got, it's got, it's got so much power. It's a 1290 V-twin, I mean, what do they call it? They call it the Beast anyway, so it's a fairly feisty bit of kit and the stock tyres. There's a massive amount of weight transfer as well, it's got a long wheelbase, so any energy transfer from front to rear is always exaggerated on a bike with a long wheelbase. And we end up with still a rather, rather warm front tyre, and we end up on a 38.9, so there's only 7 tenths of a second. Not a massive increase, considering we've pretty much adjusted the suspension up fully so we're in dire need of slicks so we're going firm and i was torn between going with a medium medium or a medium soft a bike with a lot of power will will squash the back tire just as readily as a heavily as a heavy bike squashes the front so it's just something to bear in mind if you're not running a massive amount of traction control and anti-wheelie you can squash the tire and it causes the front of the bike to buck up and can sometimes flip you off the back. 
it's just one of them things. So we've done a few laps and we've managed to get it down to a 36.5, but I just I felt there was a bit more in there. I felt we could um, we could get some more time out of it. So I carried on, carried on, carried on, and we ended up at a 36.1, which is inside the top 40. But if you look at all the bikes that are in front of it, they're all sports bikes. They're all big, massive chunks of PI further along. So I think that's quite a respectable time. I think it's quite a respectable setup on slicks to be to be getting on with. I would probably end up going for, I think possibly a hard and a hard and just softening the suspension off a little bit, let the bike transfer the weight a bit more, see if it gives a bit more control. I might do that, I might not, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm getting to the nitty gritty and I said that I wouldn't. So, last bike, last bike is the Aprilia RSV4 1100. And we're going to go back to stock again. It's fully tuned, it's on stock tyres and there's a massive amount of performance on top so these tyres are, are probably not going to have a good time So last couple of corners, the tyres are warm, the front tyre especially, but the rear's taking a lot of the load as well. So it says to me that the bike's nicely balanced, we don't need to go too far, with the difference between the front and the back maybe is a couple of clicks. The reason I turn the rebound and compression down is just to slow down the way the bike reacts. If you have it too high, the bike starts pogoing about, you end up doing all sorts of weird stuff. So that's why I turn the compression and the rebound down. Sorry, rebound down. And we've done a 137.5 on a stock bike with a stock set, sorry, on a tuned bike with a stock setup. And we run it through on the, on the stock tires with the revised tune and we end up on A 136.8 with a very, 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 very warm front tyre. So we go away, we fit some slicks, and I've had a couple of goes. The tyres are still mucking about, they're still not quite right. Um, the bike's very, the operating window's got very, very narrow, and we've ended up on a hard front with a medium rear. We've got it down to a 135.7, but again, I wasn't happy that, that that was a representative time. I felt like there was more time in the bike, so I kept going, kept going. Got through at least a couple of hours. I kept running wide, invalid laps, you name it, just kept doing it. And we end up on a 134.1, which is quite a big chunk of time to have taken out of it, and the tyres are quite happy. We switch across to the leaderboard and 
we're eighth, which again, I'm not too worried about it. It's just for if you're watching it and you think, oh, this bloke's full of shit. You don't know what he's talking about with the setups. Well, it's there or thereabouts, isn't it? It's inside the top 10. If you can make it go faster than that, happy days. I'm happy for you. Just ping me a message or a comment and say, oh, mate, your tune was amazing and it made me go fourth in the world. Like, you know, spot on. But that's it. So I'll flash the tunes up again. Um, now I'll flash them up with the figures at the side of them so you know what they are on the bike. And if you want to use them, use them. If you don't, don't. If you like this and you've enjoyed it, give me a like, give me a comment, give me a subscribe, do all the usual jazz. And I, fingers crossed, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Washing? No. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Peace.